Welcome back to another Smart Architect tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating this custom foundation wall that I'm showing here in the image. It was actually a question that came in and I just want to go through the steps. And the first step we're going to take is we're going to actually create a wall sweep that's going to take on the shape of the wedge and it will be a prometric object. And then we're going, I'm going to show you how to go about creating the the footer that would go underneath the foundation wall. So as you see in this 3D view, you can kind of get a sense of what we're going to create in the video in just a moment or two that has the foundation wall and the footer underneath and each one of the steps that we'll create. And once again, this is just how it looks here in section as well. So let's get to it. First thing I'm gonna do is come up here to new families and we're just going to scroll down. Let's find our profiles. And we're going to use the hosted profile template. So let's just go ahead and open that up. All right. The first thing I want to do is I just want to bring in the image that we're going to need here. So I'm going to use my insert tab, come over here to image. And on my desktop, I just have a JPEG image that I just want to bring in so that we can we can take a look at it. Let me zoom out. We're just going to create this wedge shape here. So I'm just going to come right here and the intersection of these two reference lines. Let's go ahead and use create. So on the create, let's use our line tool. And I'm going to start here. And I just know that we should come down, it's approximately one foot, 10 and a half, but I'm just going to, for right now, just draw myself some lines. All right. Now the second thing I wanna do is, if I come up here to modify, let's use this align dimension. And I can draw it straight to the line, but. I want to start getting you familiar with using parameters. So I'm going to do take one more step quickly. And if I come up here, I want to quickly draw myself a reference plane. So there we are. So now that we have that reference plane in place, now let's use this align tool and we're actually going to give ourselves a parameter here. So right now it's just a dimension, but if I click on this dimension and come back up here to label, I'm going to click add parameter and I'm going to give myself a length parameter here. And we'll just hit okay. And so I'm going to grab this line of that, that little wedge that we're creating for what's going to be a wall sweep. And you see how when I drug that over the line we have here, I get this toggle. I'm going to lock that in place. And let me just show you what that does for me now. If I want to flex that parameter. So I said originally this is one foot 10. Let's go back up to this image and just take a look. It's two foot, but that's to the bottom of the footer. So we're going to subtract the one and a half inches here. So we're just going to make that one foot 10 and a half. So if I zoom right back in, and I come up here to my family types, you'll see that parameter now. And I'm going to change this to one foot, 10 and a half. And we'll click apply. And you'll see that that wedge just stretches. So that's how you create a parameter that even your sketch line work will respond to. And we could put other parameters in for the angles and so forth, but I wanna keep this video short and we're going to stop at this point. So now let's just save this. And I'm just gonna save it on my desktop as wedge profile. Now I have that saved out to my desktop. And we're gonna load that into a project. We don't have any projects open. That's correct. So let's just go ahead and close this. We've created the first piece, which is the profile. Now we'll come up to architectural template. I'm just going to start a new project here. 
just for the purposes of completing this demo. Now, just so that we have some walls, I'm going to click on my wall tool right here in the first floor plan. And because I like using parameters, I'm just going to make the height from level one to level two. And I'm actually going to use the rectangular tool so I can give myself a full enclosed region. And there we are. From level one to level two. Now, let's go ahead and apply that profile. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to select my wall. And for this tutorial, the type of wall was not extremely uh, important to me. But if we wanted to keep with what we have here uh, from our sketch, you'll see that we needed to actually have a six and a half inch wall. So let's, let's just go ahead and follow this tutorial exactly. And we'll create a structure here. So let's duplicate this wall. And we're going to give ourselves a generic six and a half inch here. And I'm going to click OK. Make sure you hit duplicate so that you're not overriding the existing wall. Then I'm going to change the thickness to a six and a half inch. I could give it a particular type. Let's go ahead and do that. For this foundation wall, we're going to change the material. And you'll see our material library will come up. And I could go ahead and select my concrete or my CMU, uh, whatever we wanted to use here. So we'll use CMU and we'll hit OK. Now that will complete there. The next thing we want to do is apply that profile as well to this wall type. So I'm going to click on my profile on my preview. And you'll see we're in plan view. And I want to highlight for you that right now the sweep button is actually grayed out. But once I change this to section view, you now see that sweeps is activated. So let's click on the sweeps. And we can actually load a profile in. And I'm going to just browse out and find that profile. I created a wedge profile in the family that we started with. I'm going to open that up. Now let's go ahead and hit add. So when we hit add now, it should be loaded into our options and you'll see wedge profile down here at the bottom. So this wedge profile is now in here. We could give that wedge profile as well. Give it a materiality. I changed that to concrete as well. Let me stretch this menu out just a little bit for us. And I'm going to start this actually from the top of the wall. So let's click apply. Now you'll see it over here in the preview, which is extremely helpful because in navigating this menu right now, it's applied to the exterior side. So to reflect the sketch, we'd want to switch this to the interior side. Now you'll see that it's on the proper side of the wall. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit OK. And I'll hit OK one more time since that's now inserted into this wall type. And let's take a look at it. So it doesn't look very different here. Let's just go ahead and open up a 3D view, see what we've got. I just click on my default 3D view. You can now see that this wall has that sweep applied to the top of it. And typically your foundation wall, I'm just going to select all three of these. And actually, let's just bring the height down a little bit. So if I brought this wall down to say roughly the height was supposed to be one foot ten and a half. And now you'll see that sweep actually covers the entire foundation wall. So there you go. Now, in order to complete the footer that this foundation wall sits on, I want to show you a trick that I know some 
Revit users are using and some are actually using wall types instead. But if I just come to my structural tab now and on my foundation panel, you'll actually see a wall here. If I click on that, you'll see that there are some footings in here. Now, they're not going to be the proper dimension based on the sketch that we're starting with, but if I hit edit type here, and we'll duplicate this, and we're going to give ourselves like roughly a 12 inch bearing footing, but then again, it's only going to be an inch and a half deep. So I'm just going to modify the name here and hit OK. And then for the width, let's change the width for this new type that we've now created. And we'll say inch and a half. And we'll hit OK. Great. Now we can select. And you, if you look, as I actually select the wall, it will drop that footer right underneath. So just based on the scale of the project we're, we're dealing with, I can actually shrink this down quite a bit. This is pretty much a 50 foot by 75 foot house or structure of whatever type it may be. But if I just go ahead and come up here and cut myself a section through this from one end to the other, and then let's double click on it so that we can take a look at it. Well, I don't, I don't see the other walls with the actual wedge properly. So let's do one other thing. We need to select all of our walls and make sure we change them all to this six and a half inch because that's the wall type that we actually assigned the sweep to. And now you'll see that all of our walls, if I go back to our 3D view, all of the walls should now have that wedge shape applied to them because we're using the six and a half inch wall style that we created during the project. Last thing I will show you is if you, if I click on this wall here, many times you won't see, you know, if I click on the footer and it's actually centered based on the wall, not including that sweep, but I can use this eccentric to move it in either direction that it may need to be placed. So you'll see by putting in two inches to the eccentric, it actually moved it further to the exterior. If I put a negative two inches on here, you'll see it'll actually move pretty much centered on that wall. And I'll hit TL for thick lines just so that you can see what that profile looks like. So that pretty much defines it. There goes your wall. I hope this video has been very helpful for you. And please continue to watch the Smart Architect tutorials. I appreciate you. And I hope that you'll subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.